Hello. In this video I demonstrate how to carry out binary logistic regression using SPSS and the version I'm using is SPSS version 25. A link for the data as well as this PowerPoint will be made available for download underneath the video description. Additionally a running document containing links to other videos on logistic regression and using other programs to carry out logistic regression will be made available as well. So if you find the video and materials I have made available useful, please take the time to like the video and share it with others. And also please consider subscribing to receive additional information on new videos. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as a general overview, binary logistic regression is utilized when a researcher desires to model the relationship between one or more predictor variables and a binary dependent variable. Fundamentally, the researcher is addressing the question, what is the probability that a given case falls into one of two categories on the dependent variable, given the predictors in the model? One might be inclined to ask why we don't use standard ordinary least squares regression, or OLS, instead of binary logistic regression. OLS regression assumes a linear relationship between the independent variables and dependent variable, that the residuals are normally distributed, and that the residuals exhibit constant variance. All three assumptions are violated if the outcome variable in an OLS model is binary. And pivoting off A, the relationship between one or more predictors and the probability of a target outcome is inherently nonlinear, as probabilities are bounded at 0 and 1. So when modeling a binary outcome using OLS regression, the estimation of model parameters ignores this boundedness, which has the notable effect of producing predicted probabilities that fall outside the 0 to 1 range. Binary logistic regression estimates model parameters by taking into account the fact that probabilities are bounded at 0 and 1. It also does not assume that residuals are normally distributed and or exhibit constant variance. Now let's talk a little bit about model estimation. Unlike OLS regression, binary logistic regression uses maximum likelihood to estimate model parameters. Maximum likelihood estimation is an iterative process aimed at arriving at population parameter values that most likely produce the observed data. In general, this estimation approach assumes large samples and, aside from issues of power, smaller samples can create problems with model convergence and estimation of model parameters. And just as a side note, with smaller samples, exact logistic regression or the first procedure using penalized maximum likelihood can be used. Unfortunately, these options are not commonly available in statistics programs. Now let's talk briefly about evaluation of model fit before beginning our example. So as with standard OLS regression, evaluation of fit occurs at two levels. The first involves evaluating the fit of the full model containing the full set of predictors, which is typically done using a likelihood ratio chi-square test and the hosmer lehman show test. Moreover, overall model fit is often assessed using R pseudo R-squared indices and evaluation of the degree to which the model is able to correctly classify individuals into groups on the dependent variable. Following, one evaluates the individual predictors for their contribution to overall model fit, and this is done either using the wall test or likelihood ratio test, the latter of which involves comparing the full model with all the predictors against a reduced model with a given predictor removed. So now let's take our example. So in this example we are attempting to model the likelihood of early termination from counseling in a sample of 45 clients at a community mental health center. The dependent variable in the model is terminate, coded 1, terminated early, or 0 equals uh, did not terminate early, where the did not terminate group is the reference or baseline category, and the terminated early group is the target category. Two predictors in the model are categorical, that is gender identification, which is coded 0 equals identified as male, and one identified as female. And income is the second. Uh, it's an ordinal variable coded one for low income, two for medium income, and three for high income. The reference category for the gender ID variable is male identification, whereas the reference category for income is the low income group. Finally, two predictors are assumed continuous in the model, avoidance of disclosure, and symptom severity. 
So here we have our data. Um, our dependent variable is terminate. Again, coded 0 and 1 for did not terminate early and one for, uh, 0 for did not terminate early, 1 for did terminate early. Avoidance of disclosure, symptom severity, gender ID, again, coded 0 for male ID, 1 for female ID, and then there's our income variable, which is coded 1, 2, and 3. So to carry out our analysis, we're going to go to Analyze, Regression, and then go down to Binary Logistic. So when this box opens up, the next thing that we do is we will move our dependent variable terminate to the dependent box. We'll move avoidance of disclosure, symptom severity, gender ID, and income over to the covariates box. Next, because gender ID and income are going to be treated as categorical variables, we're going to click on categorical and then when this box opens up, we're going to move gender ID over and where it says uh, change contrast, uh, the default contrast is indicator, so we're going to leave that where it is. But we have to make a decision about the reference category. And as I said before, the reference category is male, which was coded 1. So instead of choosing last, I'm actually going to choose first. And then click change. Next, we'll move income over. And we're actually going to do the same thing because we're going to use the low income group as the reference category. So I'm going to move that over and then uh, click on uh, first and then change and there you go. Let me also note too that gender ID is a bi binary variable and it's already dummy coded so technically speaking there's no real need to do this but I am just doing this just to kind of demonstrate the use of this categorical uh, covariates option. So next we're going to click on continue and then we'll click uh, well the next thing <laughs> is that we're going to click on options. So when this box opens up here, uh, some of the things that uh, I typically would click on, Hosmer, Libby Show, Goodness of Fit, and uh, confidence intervals for the odds ratios. So next up, we will click on continue and then on OK, and now we have our output. So at the top of our output, you'll notice that there is a box uh, denoting categorical variable codings. That's for our uh, independent variables and you'll notice that income has now been recoded into two dummy variables and then gender ID is actually just remaining the same. Next you'll notice the block zero and this is basically containing information from a null model and basically what that means is that the model only contains an intercept and no predictors. So next when we scroll down you'll see that it says block 1 and we have omnibus tests of model coefficients and this is just basically a likelihood ratio chi-square test comparing the model containing the full set of predictors against a null model with no predictors and so if this chi-square test is statistically significant then that would indicate that our model is a significant improvement in fit over a null model and so you can see right here that this um, this test is indicating statistical significance. Okay, next underneath the model summary table right here, you've got several indices of fit. The Cox and Snell and Nagel Kirky, these are called pseudo R squares. And basically they're treated as rough analogies to the R square value in least squares regression. Now one of the downsides of these um, indices is that there's not a whole lot of guidance in the literature about how to interpret them and that's because they're not computed in the same way that least squares regression is computed. So if you're going to use them then again you'll want to treat them as uh, sort of loose analogies of the least squares regression R square values. Now there is a way to obtain um, an R square value that is more akin to least squares uh, regression and that is uh, basically when you run your analysis which we'll do this again uh, and click on save and then save on predicted probabilities you'll click on continue and then on OK and so when you do this you'll notice underneath the uh, inside the data set you'll now have predicted probabilities and if you run a correlation between the predicted probabilities and actual group membership which is the terminate variable right here click on OK you'll get uh, the correlation between the predicted probabilities and group membership and if you square this value 
you'll get an R square value of 0.531. So again, this is an, a, an approach that is available to you uh, to obtain an R square value more akin to what we're used to when running uh, standard least squares regression. So now I'm going to scroll up a little bit further and you'll notice that uh, this box right here has the Hosmer Lima show test and you can see that it is non-significant. And basically non-significance is an indicator of good model fit in the context of this particular test. So uh, this is actually indicating good model fit. When we scroll down you'll see that we have uh, a classification table which gives us an idea about how well the model is doing in terms of classifying uh, cases with respect to group membership on the dependent variable. So as you can see in the first row right here you've got percentage correct. This is basically indicating the percentage of cases uh, that were observed to not terminate early that were correctly classified as not terminating early based on the model. Um, then on the in the next row right here we can see that 75 percent of the cases that did terminate early were correctly predicted by the model to terminate early. So the first row actually refers to the specificity of the model. The second row uh, percentage refers to the sensitivity of the model. And you'll also notice that the overall classification accuracy was 84.4%. So the last table in our output actually contains the regression coefficient, standard errors, uh, wall tests, and significance levels along with the odds ratio. Now going back to our PowerPoint, we can see that the estimate column contains the regression coefficients. For each predictor, the regression slope is a predicted change in the log odds of falling into the target group as compared to the reference group on the dependent variable. This per one unit increase on the predictor. And again, this is basically controlling for the remaining predictors. Um, note that a common misconception is the regression coefficient indicates a predicted change in probability of target group membership per unit increase on the predictor. And this is just wrong. The coefficient is a predicted change in log odds per unit increase on the predictor. Nevertheless, you can generally interpret a positive regression coefficient as indicating the probability of falling into the target group increases as a result of increases on the predictor variable, and that a negative coefficient indicates that the probability of target membership decreases with increases on the predictor. And if the regression coefficient is zero, this can be taken to indicate no relationship basically between the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay, so now when we look at the EXPB column right here, this contains the odds ratios for the model. So the odds ratio, it, like I said, is con it basically contains values. They're interpreted as the multiplicative change in odds for every one unit increase on a predictor. So in general, an odds ratio greater than one indicates as scores on the predictor increase, there is an increasing probability um, of a case falling into the target group on the dependent variable, whereas an odds ratio that's less than one can be interpreted as de decreasing probability of being in the target group as scores on the predictor increase. And if the odds ratio is equal to one, this would indicate no change in the probability of being in the target group as scores on the predictor uh, change. Just keep in mind that uh, the metric that we're talking or using is odds instead of uh, probabilities. Okay, so let's interpret our coefficients. Avoidance of disclosure is a positive and significant predictor of the probability of our early termination within the model. And the odds ratio indicates that for every one unit increase on the predictor, the odds of early termination change by a factor of 1.472. Symptom severity is a negative and significant predictor of the probability of early termination. And the odds ratio indicates that for every one unit increment on the predictor, the odds of terminating basically change by a factor of 0 0.705, meaning that the odds are actually decreasing. Gender ID is a non-significant predictor of early termination in the model. Uh, but had the predictor been significant, then the negative coefficient would be taken as an indicator that females are less likely to terminate early than males. Finally, income is represented by two dummy variables. So you can see there's income one and income two. The first dummy variable is a comparison of the medium and low 
income groups. So remember that the medium group is basically the medium group is coded one on this variable, and the low group is coded zero on this particular variable. The negative coefficient suggests that persons in the medium income category were less likely to terminate early than those in the low income category. Nevertheless, the difference is not significant. Similarly, the second dummy variable compares the high income group and the low income group, and the difference between these two groups is not significant as well. So that sums up our review of binary logistic regression using SPSS. Um, you'll note in the PowerPoint, if you download it, uh, there is a reference page with um, the resources and references that I used in putting the video together. Um, again, if you find the video and materials uh, that are available beneficial, please take the time to like the video and share it with others. And again, also consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching.